The following video is based off of and expands upon the top 10 infamous wads list on doomworld.com. This video does not presume you've read this list already, however if you wish to the link is in the description along with timestamps to the individual sections of this video. You know, because this video is kind of long. <laughs> Let's talk about Doom again, shall we? Last time I talked about mods I think everyone should give a shot, but this time things are a bit different. Instead I want to focus on the history of Doom modding. You see, as part of Doom World's 10 Years of Doom event, they released a list called the Top 10 Infamous Wads. 10 wads, quote, with exceedingly bad reputations. This list gives a short paragraph for each of the 10, and the point of this video is to expand on that. I'll tell you more about the quality of each wad, and if I can find out, tell you what happened to the creators of each wad, and maybe a bit more. The 10 years of Doom list came out 14 years ago after all. Where did the creators go? So grab some popcorn, this might be a long one, and without any further stalling, let's go. <laughs> So let's start with a wad I kinda hate. The Sky May Be might just be one of the most obnoxious experiences in video gaming. It's honestly hard to find somewhere to start talking about this, so I'm gonna force myself to talk professionally because otherwise this segment would just be me yelling incoherently for a few minutes. The Sky May Be is a wad made by Doug the Eagle and Cansom running through a separate mod called the Blessed Engine. As of the current year, running said engine on modern Windows through a modern source port is pretty much impossible. So you'll be using a somewhat glitchy .pk3 file instead. The Blessed Engine makes a number of completely wild changes to Doom gameplay, like giving all of the imps BFGs, and also replacing the plasma gun with the worst gun in Doom modding history. The gun is good. No it isn't! Its range is terrible, will be likely to kill you, and even if you have God Mode on, it can trap you in a corner with its intense, invisible cone of damage. In short, all the changes have been made to screw you. Sure, the shotgun, or shell gun as it is called now, is technically better, but the enemies have become so ridiculous that it really doesn't matter. For one example, the barons can still kill you if you're in God Mode. Yeah, good luck getting through this. But what about level design? Well, there's three maps here. The Blessed Trainer Alpha gives you some guns, and that's it. The Blessed Trainer Beta seems to actually have a bit of a military base feel to it. The level layout is a bit confusing, and the changes made to each of the enemies is annoying as ever, but it's still mostly completable. Lots of missing textures, unfortunately. Finally, we make it to the Sky Maybe, the true single map. The map begins with an odd scrolling message, somewhat impressive for 90s Doom modding, but it's not much in terms of content. A couple of odd rules are laid out, and then one designating that no cheats are allowed. However, I used a few and never saw any repercussions other than still being killed by the Barons. I'd like to say though that the Sky May Be is very visually striking compared to average Doom mods. The status bar has been replaced with one that has that wonderful low-budget steel-like old DOS game feel that you see in games like Contract Zack, and about 33% of the rest of the games on Ross's Game Dungeon. Armor being replaced with checksum I presume to be some sort of programming joke. Right behind you at the beginning of the level is the exit. It won't open for you though. You have to no-clip in and press this wall, but that's it. You're going to want to do this as the actual level is very frustrating. You'll find enemies that won't die, imps that can insta-kill you, extremely tight walking areas, and occasionally a pit you have no way of getting out if you haven't grabbed the key already. All the while, constant old British media references are being made. Remember the gun is good? That comes from the movie Zardoz, and killing imps causes them to blurt out your bloody arms off from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. These aren't really jokes, they're references, and while I'd love to play a mod based around specifically either a Doom recreation of Zardoz, or a recreation of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, well, this doesn't cut it. Overall, while unique and somewhat technically impressive, this mod is hardly fun. But what happened to those that created it? Well, in terms of Doom-related content, Doug the Eagle and Cansom would be best known for creating the Cansom's Trial series. These maps are a bit frustrating, but ultimately a lot better than the Sky May Be, and lack the sheer annoyance factor of the enemy and weapon changes. Doug apparently is also working on something called Binary Doom, a Doom mod designed to create a virtual computer. No download yet, though. Oh yeah, by the way, this is Doug the Eagle's website. In addition to Doom mods, he has like these text let's plays for a couple of games, as well as custom software for old Windows versions. There's a link in the description, of course. 
Oh, and you know how he's Doug the Eagle? I didn't think of him much at first, but it turns out Doug here is a furry. Considering he's from the 90s, I'd call him a proto-furry because he's been around so long, but he's even more than that. On his website, he releases music albums that are like furry, new age prog rock. He also has a YouTube channel called Tape Wolf and a webcomic called Project Future. That's actually still regularly updated. We clearly have different interests, but it's always cool to find someone who's put out content in so many fields. But, in terms of Doom, his contributions seem to be long gone. Here's my walkthrough of WoW.Wad. First, you type IDDQD. Grab this here BFG, run over here, and shoot a couple of times. It's over. No next level. That's it. Okay, I can say a bit more. So, first of all, don't try to win without god mode, it's not going to happen. Second, I guess that corpse there signifies the pit, which is something, I guess. And third, this black space down here is actually supposed to be a no texture hall of mirrors effect, but since I'm playing this in GZ Doom 2.4.0, my eyes are spared that. What else? Well, I think it's obvious why this is on the infamous wads list. It's not only bad, but immensely low effort. What kind of person would even put this on the internet? Well, his name is Paul Thrussell, and he made WoW.Wad when he was 10 in 1999. Today he's aware of how bad it is, but he's not the only one. On his blog, he shared some fan art of his level by Japanese pixiv artist Nanka Kurashiki. If you're not familiar with Nanka, she makes a lot of Doom-related art and some levels, and it's all very good. I'll be linking her pixiv in the description. Oh yeah, the WoW. As far as I can find, Paul hasn't made anything else, although I did mention his blog earlier and I will link it too. The only other thing I can say is that some people have done speedruns of this wad where it's modified to actually be beatable. That is, when you kill the cyber demon, the level actually ends. The current world record is only 7 seconds on ultraviolence. Wanna try to take it? <laughs> UAC Labs isn't a special affair. This wad is a total of two maps, neither of which are very long and show little that is special about them. The first map kind of feels like an okay introduction map in the vein of entryway. It's not especially long, but it does have a few notable things. First of all, there's a ton of enemies on this level, well over 200. That includes an archfile and a cyber demon, the latter of which has a new voice clip for some reason. However, you don't really have to fight most of them, especially the archfile. After grabbing the red key card, just run. In fact, you can grab a BFG in this level and enough energy to fill it up, but you won't really need to use it. Other than that, this wand is colored key doors that aren't colored, which I always hate. Oh, and deaths by explosion have this weird bone cracking sound attached to them. Most enemies spill more blood on death too, it's like an amateur Brutal Doom catch-up mod. The second map is worse. It's just way too dark. It ends with a couple of arch files. I hope you didn't use that BFG. Nothing special though. I think the first map might also be decent for deathmatch, but the second, nah. Still plenty beatable though. So why did this mediocre wad make it in? Well, a few years after this wad was released, its creator, Eric Harris, killed people. If you're an adult, I'm going to presume you know all this because how big of a deal it was at the time, but for the younger people... Eric Harris was one of the two perpetrators of the Columbine High School Massacre, which killed 15, including themselves, on April 20th, 1999. Before this, Harris was semi-active in the Doom community, releasing a few wads over the years now called the Harris Levels. UAC Labs is the easiest to find, downloadable through the infamous wads list, but the rest have been banned from the id games archive. Most chilling, perhaps, is that shortly before the massacre, Harris was working on a big wad called Tear that may have contained a rumored Columbine high school level. He uploaded it too, apparently, but it seems to have been lost. In terms of media coverage, the Columbine High School Massacre was almost unimaginably huge. People, and by people I mean 24-hour news stations who want to stretch their coverage of a one-day tragedy into months of programming, look to blame just about anything for the tragedy. Music, movies, and of course, video games. A lot of that annoying video games cause violence crap became popular here. The creators of Doom World themselves were interviewed by major media organizations only a year after the site's creation. Although it is 
painfully true that Eric Harris was part of the Doom community. It came to be known that he had many psychological problems and referenced film about as much as video games in his personal journal. Of course, after some studies, we now know today that video games absolutely do not compel people to violence, but many a suburban mom sure thought that in 1999. It's because of Eric Harris that the Doom community had to go through its most trying time, and that's sure enough to make UAC Labs one infamous wad. Okay, so enough with this downer stuff. Let's get silly. This is nuts.wad by BPRD. In front of me now is about 10,000 demons. Yeah. Right now I can still move and such, but when I start this fight, the game will come to a crawl. Yes, still, in 2017. Currently have an i7 6800K and a GTX 1070, but they aren't even enough. Lowering the resolution didn't seem to help either. That being said, if you can somehow stomach the frame drops, Nuts is surprisingly beatable. Just grab the invulnerability and run on the demons. I couldn't beat it without cheats though, my computer simply wasn't able to handle it, and I didn't feel like fiddling with the command line in Crispy Doom to make it work. Nuts really is just a joke, and certainly a more sadistic one in the 90s where computers were much, much weaker. But enough about that. Doom World's description mentions that there were two other Nuts maps that were likely better than the first. Let's check those ones out. So, Nuts2.wad, the second anniversary gold-plated plutonic alloy-coated 8-volume nuclear donkey edition, is a much more advanced joke than the first. Right when we start, we have some enemies disguised as power-ups, fake mancubi, and the shotgun disguised as the BFG. The enemy amount here is actually a lot more reasonable too. My computer can actually handle it. The trick on this map is to press the button found on each corner of the map closest to the starting platform. This will kill many of the enemies. You then wait for the enemies to kill themselves or run along one of the edges of the map. Pressing the button found at the end here will lead to a second room, much like the second room on the original nuts. Just go straight to the button. Run to the right now. Press the button in the final room and, well, I'm not gonna spoil the rest, I'll just say it's a very impressive fight. Now we get to Once Upon a Nut, nuts 3 wad This one keeps a ridiculous amount of enemies, but has a very different level layout. Taking place at the foot of a star temple, nuts 3 wad actually has a pretty unique look. Back are the framerate problems though. This can actually be dealt with, however. Alright, so listen closely, here's what you need to do. Run across the demons as you did before till you get to the crescent in the ground at the foot of the Star Temple. Then wait for the enemies to kill themselves off for a while behind the Star Temple sign. Out in the field there's an invulnerability sphere. Remember that, but don't take it until I tell you to. You may now explore the area. Running on the stars will net you extra ammo, which you will need, especially the energy packs. Once you're ready, run to the crescent on the left side of the temple, run along here to the end, and run off. Then fight these cyber demons while circle strafing. There's a teleporter on this platform and you can leave at any time, and you might want to to kill the cyber demons at a distance. Once everything is sufficiently dead, run out and grab that invulnerability sphere. Run back quickly to the star temple and press the left star button on the platform. Then head back through the left crescent portal and up the elevator to fight some arch files. Run to the left side and press all three buttons, then go to the right side and ride up the elevator. Fall next to the star laser and you are done. Congrats! I explained it quickly, but that whole sequence took me 40 minutes plus to figure out and execute. Now for the creator of the Nuts trilogy, BPRD. He went on to win a CACO award for his Wad Grove in the first CACO awards in 2004, and his Wad Equinox from 2001 was included on the top 100 Wads of all time. His last contribution to the Doom community came in Christmas of 2006 with Hand.Wad, a mod that simply replaced all the weapons besides the super shotgun with gifts of his hands and with homemade sound effects. Few Doom modders could joke like BPRD and back it up with good content too. Shamey hasn't made any in so long, I'd love to see what he could do with modern GZ Doom in a Nuts 4. Question, does this map look familiar to you? If you've played Final Doom, it sure does. TNT Evolution is a megawatt and one half of the commercially sold Final Doom. Produced by Team TNT in 1996, TNT Evolution is a very good 32 map set. It's not wacky in any way like Nuts or something highly transformative like I don't know, Sonic Robo Blast 2, but it's the base Doom gameplay essentially at its peak. Honestly, I don't really feel like talking about its quality since it's so well known and widely played. I'd like to talk more about why it's considered infamous, and what ended up happening with its creators, Team TNT. 
Team TNT was a big deal in the 90s for Doom for a multitude of reasons. Its membership flux from a peak of about 100 members to a low of about, no, I don't know, only 40 members? Some of the most famous members of Team TNT included Ty Halderman, who maintained the id games archive and contributed greatly to the Boom Source Port project, a project that really ironed out the Doom engine and is why we can play many of the maps and mods we have today. Then we have the Casali brothers, who also independently created the second half of Final Doom, the Plutonia Experiment. For them, Dario Casali would go on to be a level designer at Valve and contributed heavily to the original Half-Life, as well as noticeably with both Team Fortress Classic and Team Fortress 2, and Milo Casali would work heavily on the 2002 game Global Operations at what is now Rockstar Vancouver. Also, here's a fun fact. Milo's birth was called Against Evangelical Morality by the official newspaper of Vatican City. Linking that in the description so I can stay on topic with Doom. There was also Tom Mustaine, who co-founded Ritual Entertainment, who would go on to make games like Sin and Star Trek Elite Force 2. He also went on to found Escalation Studios, who made the Doom 3 iOS game and helped its software with developing the multiplayer for Rage and the snap map feature of Doom 4. That's some serious pedigree. And, uh, oh yeah, that infamous part. So, it's pretty simple. This wad is infamous because you have to buy it. And not only do you have to buy it, but it was originally announced as going to be free. In fact, it was announced as a commercial product just a few hours before it was set to be released. And this move was unprecedented. Many called them out as being greedy, and on an archived Usenet discussion, you can see people claiming that selling a wad is absurd, especially when so many are built off of free utilities. Some wondered how much money the individual members of TMT would even get. One even claimed that he'd make his own 32 level wad. I've been unable to find it. Frankly, this discussion is still relevant. The vast majority of game modders never make a cent off of their work, and whether or not they should or how they would get paid is a discussion that creeps its head up every once in a while. Doom pretty much invented game modding, and as such it isn't surprising that this discussion would have begun here as well. As for Final Doom as a product now, it can be a justifiable purchase. After playing the sheer breadth of Doom mods I've played, having to pay for a basic map set can seem kind of ridiculous, when I can find much more creative stuff for free. But usually costs next to nothing, and for less than $2 at times, I can think of much worse ways to spend your money than with two fantastic megawatts. Deathmatch is all about gameplay. It's the multiplayer equivalent of a shooter at its most basic, nothing but pure competition. And what is the single most important part of a deathmatch? Well, being able to play it, probably. I introduce to you. Gothic 99. Now from the footage you're seeing now, it probably doesn't seem that bad, and well, it isn't. Gothic 99 is a highly stylized set of deathmatch levels for Doom 2. It runs fine, now at least. You see, when Gothic 99 was released, it pushed computers so hard that it was practically unplayable due to the sheer detail of the map seriously straining computer hardware. For reference, when this map set first came out, the Intel Pentium 3 and the AMD Athlon were just reaching clock speeds of 500 MHz, and Nvidia's GeForce series was seeing its first release with the GeForce 256, which had 128 megabytes of VRAM. Keep in mind these were top of the line and quite expensive, but for reference, the kinda sorta high-end stuff I'm using is a CPU clocked at 4.0 gigahertz and a graphics card with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. What I'm saying is what made this map set infamous is kind of irrelevant now. Now it's just a couple of interesting looking levels. Whether or not they're good for deathmatch, well, I don't know. But what I do know is that this map set contains 8 levels, and that the head of the project was Matt Dixon. But his friends also contributed. One of those friends was Linguisha. Now Lingier has had a long presence in the Doom community, being one of the co-founders of Doom World, convincing John Carmack to release the Doom source code under the GNU GPL license, creating the shoot at until it dies image, recently making Insta Doom, and contributing to some map sets, one of which was Gothic 99. So what's so funny? Only that in the infamous WADs list, it was Linguisha who wrote about Gothic 99, who called it full of pointless detail, and that no one in their right mind would ever, 
ever deathmatch on it. Now, he's mostly talking about the first level, but still I find it pretty funny that one of the map set's creators is telling me just how unplayable the map set is. As a last note though, it's worth mentioning that Matt Dixon would, shortly after the release of this very wad, take part in judging the 10 sectors contest on Doomworld. Ironic, since his wads would often have thousands of sectors. The wad that came out of this was listed as the second best wad of 2000. <laughs> Joke wads. Nuts was kind of one. Movie wads. Now, that's a new one. Enter in Imp Encounter, second edition. In this movie, Doom Guy shoots some enemies, walks along and uh oh, what's this? He then has Mass Effect levels of intercourse with the Imp. The Imp dies, the end. That's it, really. It then repeats itself. I doubt this was even made for titillation. It's very likely a joke. Just some cutscene is playing and then BAM! Doomguy on Imp action. Well then, what about the creator? Well, the creator is anonymous. But they also created a wad called dwforms.wad, which I won't play because apparently it has some disturbing imagery in it. So yeah, that's it. A short segment for a short joke. <laughs> Doom modding can be difficult. Even if you manage to learn the tools of the trade, trying to actually get a good map going can be its own unique challenge. It requires a lot of effort, not everyone is willing to make that effort. Some people stop short of getting to the good part of map making and will just release broken, short garbage. You know, like wow.wad. In comes Scott Cover's Mockery. Designed as a tribute to level designers who just plain suck, Mockery is the kind of map that you might not understand if you're completely unfamiliar with Doom level design. First of all, the map is very short. It's really not much more than a square. You start out with a ridiculous amount of weaponry given what you'll fight, too. There's a BFG just a few short steps from your spawning position as well as a nearby rocket launcher and plasma rifle. This subrachnotron never had a prayer. This bridge cannot be walked under an artifact original Doom engine and also lacks a texture on the bottom, making it look kind of silly. Thankfully, Scott put teleporters down here so we don't get stuck. This button is hilariously high up, and just in general it's clear to me that this map was simply made to show off some amateur mistakes many level designers make. Funny thing about that is that I actually couldn't find anything by Scott cover before Mockery. Speaking of which, Scott, who went under the name Kovaro online, would not really go on to do much else, unfortunately. While he did work as a newsie for Doomworld for two years, in terms of levels, he got caught up in two projects that really seemed to kill his interest in the community. One would eventually be finished by others in 2006, a deathmatch map set called Crucified Dreams. The other was a megawad project and an expansion of Mockery. It was never finished. However, a four-level demo was released in 2003 and I've never seen anyone talk about it, so let's check it out. The first thing you'll see here is the glitchy nature of having multiple overlaying radiation suits shoved in your face. Wonderful and unique. The first map here is just acid and acid everywhere. There's the typical problems, misaligned textures, absurd amounts of weaponry, and enemies clipping in walls can all be found. However, I kind of like this acid-covered aesthetic. Clearly this map isn't great, but I think something could be done with this. The next map is almost nostalgic for being a great representation of a type of person I remember seeing a lot over a decade ago. Overzealous teenagers releasing garbage content to the web. This map was apparently made by Sir Robin, and you see it everywhere. Apparently, he was here too. There's some new textures, they aren't very good, the enemies are annoyingly placed, you can see through the map, you get ambushed by arch files, and overall I feel like this map is the most absurdly bad out of the four. The next is probably the most accurately terrible. Looking like a rejected map from thy flesh consumed, there's not a lot going for it. It's mostly vertical, somebody taped a bunch of corpses to air. You get jumped by a spider mastermind, there's that annoying doom side running slash jumping, and there's a trap at the exit that also lets you see through the map. The last map is just mockery again, and at this point it was five years old too. 
But before I move on, I'd like to recommend Mach 2 The Speed of Stupid. I honestly think the title might be a reference to Mach Green. It works well as a spiritual successor, although admittedly it's much more ridiculous than Mockery ever was. I also wouldn't be surprised if you've already heard of Mach 2, it's infamous in its own right. Perhaps if Doom World makes the 25 years of Doom with a new infamous WADs list, it'd be in there. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> So let's talk map making again. As said before, it's hard, but there is a way you can easily pump out maps to play whenever you want. Level generators. There's been quite a few, but one of the most notable is Sleege. I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced. Sleege stands for Space Llama Internment Gazelle Expert, and its levels are easily identifiable. They all start with this S shape and a message saying you found a secret. I've played quite a few and I've also noticed weirdly expanded textures and generally cramped level design. However, they are all playable and beatable with good amounts of weapons, ammo, and enemies. They aren't special, but they aren't garbage either. And because of that, Sleege became infamous. You see, after Sleege released in 1998, many people ran the program and then just uploaded the wads it created to the id games archive. There was a massive influx of wads, and in a very short period of time, the id games archive banned all Sleege generated levels. Despite that, Sleege is still hosted on Doomworld, although it's somewhat difficult to get running now. That being said, the website Soulsphere runs an automatic Sleege level generator that, to this day, creates a new megawad you can play daily. The site is run by Simon Howard, who has also worked on Doom-related projects such as Chocolate Doom and Free Doom. As for Sleege's creator David Chess, I have no idea, I couldn't find anything else about the guy. Now these days, level generation has become even easier and better. Oblige, created by Andrew J. Apted, who also created the Edge Source port, creates much nicer and varied levels and runs much better on modern operating systems. At this point, Sleege is outdated, but its position in Doom history is nonetheless notable. So whatever will we finish this list with? Drum roll, please. Surprise! It's nothing. But first, let's talk about this wad called More Death. This 1997 wad features six levels all in a very brownish castle-like theme, often with bookcases. Almost like a brighter quake at times. The levels are kind of labyrinthian, which can be annoying, but with subsequent playthroughs, getting through these levels really isn't that bad. Overall, I think it's an alright level set. Also, I found some floating corpses like Mockery, but I think that might just be an engine error of me running a 1997 wad on a 2017 version of GZ Doom. Oh yeah, it's been 20 years since More Death came out. But I'm lying. More Death isn't actually finished. The More Death I was just talking about is just the first episode. Yep, the reason why More Death Episode 2 is on the infamous WADs list is because it simply doesn't exist. It gets worse because at the time of the infamous WADs list coming out, it had only been 6 years since More Death Episode 1. Now it's been 20 and it still hasn't come out. Why? Why do we care? The answer is Gaston Lahout. Hopefully I said that right. Gaston, usually going under the name More Death online, was the creator of More Death obviously, and one of the co-founders of Doomworld. He's still around, too, posting not too infrequently on the Doomworld forums. Well, if he hasn't disappeared, what's wrong with the WAD? Well, you see, the thing about more death is what I played isn't going to be all that representative of the final product, according to Gaston. More death is touted as a total conversion, which means all new graphics, enemies, and sounds at the least. What I played only had a few replaced sound clips. More Death is also supposed to be the shining example of the Eternity Engine, a Boom-compatible Doom Source port that's been in development forever, and doesn't play nice with my computer, unfortunately. It's still being updated, though. As for Episode 2, the official website hasn't been updated in 10 years, and the project once suffered a stolen computer, which put things back for some time. The project was supposed to involve several people, but apparently it's just Gaston now. Reading his posts on Doomworld, it really strikes me that he's putting much more attention to the Eternity Engine than Mordeath right now. So without him working on finishing it, as far as I know at least, we still get to have the Mordeath Award and the Kako Awards. An award that celebrates a mod long in development that actually managed to come out. Someday, perhaps, Mordeath will win the Mordeath Award. My videos feel the same way, don't they? 
sorry. Well anyways, this video is coming to an end. If you have any comments about the video, comment below. And if you have any requests or questions from me, you can send them to me on Twitter, at UtterSpartanYT. This video was a lot of fun to make, and I think I still have a Doom video or two left in me. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you soon. As a last note though, it's worth mentioning that Matt Dixon would, shortly after the release of this very wad, take part in judging the 10 sectors contest on Doomworld. Ironic since his wads would have to off the bed.